The Gangster and the Sage Episode 1 The Visit Confucius had a friend named Liu Chia Ji, the older brother of the Gangster Chi. Gangster Chi had about 9,000 men. They rampaged throughout the land, raided the territories, and assaulted the local overlords. They crashed through walls, broke into houses, drove away the cattle and the horses, and took the wives and daughters of men. Their greed made them forget all family bonds. They heeded neither fathers nor mothers and paid no respect to elder brothers. To the ancestors, they did not sacrifice. Confucius said to Liu Chiaji, A father needs to be able to chastise his son, and an older brother must be able to teach his younger brother a lesson. You are a man of high standing, but your younger brother is the gangster Chi. He causes all sorts of trouble, and you have not managed to set him straight. You make me ashamed. I am going to talk some sense into him in your stead. Liu Chia Ji replied, That gangster has a heart like a hot spring and a mind like a hurricane. He's strong enough to take anyone out, and he's smart enough to put a nice spin on his wrongs. If someone manages to please him, he'll be glad. But if rubbed up the wrong way, he'll get mad and embarrass anyone he's talking to. Just don't go there. Confucius didn't listen. He went to see the gangster with Yen Hui as his driver and Zer Gong as support. They found Gangster Chi resting with his gang at the southern side of Mount Tai. He was snacking on the minced liver of a man. Confucius stepped out of the vehicle and approached the camp. The tale of Confucius' visit to the gangster Chi is the longest coherent narrative in the whole book of Chuangzi. It reads almost like a modern short story and portrays its protagonists with lively details and in a quite elaborate dramatic setting. It constitutes the bulk of the 29th chapter, also titled Gangster Chi, which is part of the so-called miscellaneous chapters that tended to be regarded as peripheral or even inauthentic. However, the piece is mentioned by the famous 2nd century BCE historian Sima Chen in his short biographical note on Chuang Chou, the presumed author of the Chuangzi. Sima Chen says that Chuang Chou wrote Gangster Chi along with two other texts now included among the outer and miscellaneous chapters to mock the followers of Confucius and to illustrate the arts of Lao Tzu. Given this record, it makes sense to assume that Far from being a later addition to the core of the Chuangzi, the gangster Chi story may actually be one of the earlier and more original segments of the book. In any case, Sima Qian's note clearly shows that already in early China, Zhuangzhou was seen not only as a serious philosopher, but also as a skilled writer with a satirical bent, who liked to make fun of mainstream Confucians and did so from a Taoist background. The tale's main protagonists were all known as historical figures at the time, and in this way it follows the common pattern of narratives in early Chinese philosophical texts. From a purely formal perspective, it is presented as a true story from which the reader is supposed to learn something, either a moral message illustrated by good or bad exemplars, or a strategic lesson on how to achieve success or avoid failure. However, the very first sentence already contradicts its formal historicity and sets a fictional and humorous tone. Liu Chia Ji, a respected politician of old, could not have been friends with Confucius, the sage, government official, and ethical advisor, as Confucius is believed to have been born in the 6th century BCE, nearly a century after Liu Chia Ji's death. The curious assertion that Gangster Chi, a notorious arch-villain in early China about whom many legends were circulating, was Liu Chia Ji's younger brother, is not supported by other sources. It is a quite frivolous invention of the Chuangzi, it seems, made in order to connect the vicious lowlife with a virtuous ancient gentleman. 
It is precisely this brotherly bond connecting the highest and lowest strata of society and the opposite poles of the ethical divide between good and evil that signals the main philosophical theme of the story. The carnivalesque mixture of noble and base and the incongruent fusion of moral opposites. The historical Liu Chiaji is mentioned by the most famous early Confucian philosophers. Confucius commends him in the Analects, and Mencius praises him in his works. In both cases, he appears as a calm person of great integrity, unperturbed by three consecutive dismissals by corrupt superiors he had been forced to serve. He mirrors a similar character in the Chuangzi named Sun Shu Ao, who is equally stoic when fired three times from his high office and promoted again later. In the gangster Chi tale, Liu Chiaji seems to function as a dispassionate Taoist observer who, despite his involvement with the other protagonists as brother and friend, manages to distance himself from their respective follies. He keeps a cool head in the midst of immoral desires and corrupt power struggles which he is incapable of reigning in. Confucius is introduced in the tale as a man strictly committed to the emblematic family values that his philosophy has been commonly associated with, at least since the time the Chuangzi was written. He emphasizes the roles of father and son and older and younger brother. Fathers and sons represent the hierarchy between successive generations of a patriarchal kinship group where the young must serve the old. Similarly, within the same generation, the later-born siblings are subordinated to those born before them. Social order, it is presumed, hinges as much on the obedience of those at the bottom of the hierarchy as on the capability of those higher up to enforce their positions of power. Otherwise, things may soon get out of control, as the case of the unauthoritarian Liu Chiaji and his gangster kid brother so clearly shows. Confucius points out most unambiguously to the soft Liu Chiaji that his Taoist passivity is not only disrupting the stability and the peace of society, but more importantly, that it is an ethically intolerable shame. In line with a Confucian ethics that seeks to ensure social and political order by means of moral instruction and behavioral training, Confucius decides to take charge of the matter himself. He is going to teach the gangster how to change his evil ways. Ignoring Liu Chiaji's advice that he had better not mess with the gangster, Confucius sets out on his educational mission. Wisely, though, he does not go alone, but takes along his two most trusted and well-known disciples, Yan Hui and Zhe Gong, to back him up. Escorted by them, he arrives at the gangster's camp, ready to confront the rogue. Gangster Qi is mentioned in many early Chinese texts and is almost always depicted as the embodiment of crime, cruelty, and chaos. He is contrasted with paragons of virtue functioning as ideal rulers. Such contrasts show history as a struggle between forces of civilization, often represented by Confucian sages, and forces of barbarism threatening to viciously destroy this precarious social order out of personal depravity and brutish inhumanity. Gangster Chi's initial description fits this image perfectly. He is the leader of a huge crime gang acting like an army from hell. They torture the country and its people out of sheer greed and sadistic enjoyment. What is more, the murderous mob blatantly disrespects the cornerstone of Confucian civilization, its family values. Not only do they destroy families by stealing wives and daughters, but on top of this desecration, they have lost all respect for their own relatives. Like Gangster Chi, his gang members have disassociated themselves from their kinship ties and set themselves free from all related restrictions. Completely uninhibited, they go as far as neglecting the duties of ancestral worship, thereby in effect starving the spirits of the very predecessors to whom they owe their existence. In effect, they not only kill everyone who gets in their way, but also their own kin. 
When Liu Chiaji speaks about his brother, the image of the villain begins to change. While he does confirm the gangster's criminal nature and frightening characteristics, Liu Chiaji also stresses the man's mindset. His violence betrays a sort of unbound vigor and unhinged energy. He may be susceptible to flattery, but if he dislikes a person's attitude, he will be straightforward and mercilessly embarrass them. Clearly, he neither respects rank nor social convention. In Liu Chiaji's depiction, Gangster Chi is both raw and sensitive, aggressive and smart, volatile and direct, wild and eloquent. This nuanced and ambiguous picture corresponds to the gangster's features in other sections of the Chuangzi, showing him as a complex and contradictory combination of good and evil. When the gangster appears in the story, he is immediately put under the spotlight. The southern side of a mountain where Confucius finds him is called Yang in Chinese, which is associated with sun, light, and masculinity, as opposed to Yin, which is associated with the moon, shade, and femininity. This introduction highlights the gangster's virility. While his ferocity is exaggerated and becomes grotesque, he is a cannibal casually devouring a human liver. The incongruent characteristics of Gangster Chi and the Chuangzi gave rise to modern interpretations of his historical significance that deviate decisively from his traditional picture as an arch-villain. Based on Marxist dialectical materialism, Chinese Maoists regarded Gangster Chi as a rebel, representing the revolt of the early Chinese peasantry against their feudal oppressors and the Confucian value system that legitimized them. This begs the question, how will Confucius fare when trying to straighten out this unwieldy rebel?